Earlier this year, I had the honor of interviewing Aaron Carl, the proprietor in charge of Analytical Grammar, a defendant in a case brought by plaintiff Matthew Bradley, the guy who posted wrong on so many levels picture on Facebook and then sued through Richard Leibowitz and lost the case because apparently Richard Leibowitz never did his due diligence on whether Facebook's terms of service allowed for the secondary use of the wrong on so many levels picture. We have lots of videos of that. I will try to link them all in various bubbles in the upper corner of the video. But we are now at the point where the case is almost over and analytical grammar through lawyer Dan Booth has moved for sanctions, attorney's fees, and costs pursuant to the court's authority and the law. And so here it is. The court should award defendant analytical grammar its attorney's fees and costs against Richard Leibowitz and Leibowitz law firm. While he was lead counsel by special appearance for Matthew Bradley, Leibowitz raised and pursued claims he knew were bogus. Analytical pointed out to the shortcomings in the claims and promptly offered to settle, but Leibowitz failed to communicate the settlement offers to Bradley and misinformed him about the weakness of his position. Analytical grammar prevailed at summary judgment, but the cost of litigation drove Analytical out of business. Leibowitz and his firm must be held liable pursuant to the court's inherent authority and to 28 U.S.C. 1927, which is a fee-shifting provision for frivolous lawsuits and for multiplying the proceedings with his bad faith arguments and vexatious tactics. On behalf of Bradley, Leibowitz raised claims of copyright infringement and removal of copyright management information, analytical counterclaimed for a declaratory judgment. The court granted summary judgment to analytical on Bradley's claims. Leibowitz was suspended from practicing law in the Southern District of New York on November 25th, 2020. He was suspended from practice in this court and disqualified representing Bradley effective March 19th, 2021. Bradley has engaged new counsel and so have Leibowitz and his firm. In 2017, Bradley posted a photograph on his Facebook page using the public setting under the terms of service that allowed other users to repost it. Analytical received a copy and reposted the image on its Facebook page consistent with the unconditional express license in Facebook's terms of service. After Bradley celebrated the viral circulation for a year, he added copyright management information to his Facebook post, which is basically attribution registered the copyright and engaged Leibowitz's firm. Leibowitz initiated this action against Analytical June 18th, 2019, alleging copyright infringement and CMI removal. Neither claim was colorable. Leibowitz did not respond to or inform Bradley about Analytical's early offers to accept judgment and engage in settlement discussions. You always, as an attorney, you always have a duty to bring offers to settle to your client. It sent Leibowitz a $500 offer of judgment on August 16th, 2019, and reiterated the offer three days later. Leibowitz did not respond. He misled Bradley, and on August 18th, 2019, that analytical had defaulted and that damages would be assessed within five months. On August 20th, analytical engaged counsel who restated its offer to accept entry of judgment for $500. Leibowitz did not respond. After Analytical filed its answer, Leibowitz proposed a $5,500 settlement on September 17, 2019. Analytical rejected the offer the next day. He, I'm assuming that's Leibowitz, proposed a $1,000 deal October 7th, explaining that he had demanded $5,500 at first because we thought her business was larger, the analytical grammar business. October 8th, Leibowitz proposed the $500 deal, and Analytical rejected it, seeking its sunk costs of defense. Analytical's counsel told Leibowitz our client has already incurred more than $20,000 in attorney's fees and intends to prevail both on the merits and in obtaining an award of all attorney's fees, that amount will only rise as the case progresses. So if you and your client want to limit the legal fees you face, you should dismiss with prejudice as soon as possible. On November 15th, Analytical's counsel again offered to settle for payment of $20,000 towards its incurred fees, and Leibowitz rejected the offer. Leibowitz did not tell Bradley about Analytical's offers, the offers he had made ostensibly on Bradley's behalf, Analytical's potentially meritorious defenses, or that 
maintaining suit exposed Bradley to a risk of order to pay analytical's attorney's fees pursuant to 17 U.S.C. 505. Leibowitz and Bradley had evidence fatal to Bradley's claims in their hands before filing suit. The pre-2018 Facebook terms of service that defeated the infringement claim were and remain publicly available on Facebook. Leibowitz had displayed and recited verbatim excerpts from those same terms at a Manhattan conference for photographers on June 3, 2019, 15 days before filing suit. So Leibowitz knew what the Facebook terms were, and he filed anyway, according to this. The photograph in his original Facebook post did not indicate that he was the photographer, and he did not add copyright management attribution information to that photograph until a year after Analytical used it. In all, Leibowitz never had a reasonable basis to claim that Analytical infringed Bradley's copyright or removed or altered any CMI. He also failed to disclose evidence of actual damages in violation of Rule 26, ensuring that Bradley could not be awarded such relief on either claim. But Leibowitz raised the costs of defense with knowingly spurious arguments. Leibowitz propelled litigation forward until Analytical overcame Bradley's claims in summary judgment. Though Analytical was ultimately vindicated, it could ill afford Ford to defend this litigation. It was administratively dissolved in 2020 when the costs of its defense rose too high. Leibowitz should be required to pay the excess expenses he imposed on analytical under the law. He was the controlling force behind every unfounded argument and abusive tactic. He filed baseless claims that he refused to withdraw when shown they had no merit. Believing that analytical had deep pockets, he failed to relay its settlement offers to his client and pressed for a bigger payoff while its legal fees mounted. He never completed Bradley's initial disclosures and withheld responsive discovery until after Bradley's deposition and his deceptive arguments further multiplied the time required to depose of this frivolous action, which ultimately drove Analytical out of business. Leibowitz and his firm should be held liable for all fees, costs, and expenses caused by his bad faith conduct and to ensure deterrence and a full recovery. Section 1927 says any attorney who so multiplies proceedings unreasonably and vexatiously may be required by the court to satisfy personally the excess costs. The court's inherent powers allow the court to sanction a party who acted in bad faith, vexatiously, or wantonly. Attorneys are obligated to act with candor in presenting their claims for resolution. To justify sanctions, it is enough that counsel acted recklessly or in bad faith. A finding of bad faith is warranted where an attorney acted knowingly or recklessly to raise a frivolous argument. Courts may find bad faith where an attorney engages in reckless behavior. Civil sanctions ordering counsel to pay fees and costs are compensatory, not punitive. They may shift all of a party's fees. And so the argument goes that Leibowitz should be sanctioned for obstructing potential compromise from the outset. He did not respond to the offer of judgment, his silence ran up their fees, and was part of a broader strategy to use the burdens of litigation to extract settlements even in frivolous or unmeritorious suits. He acted in bad faith by failing to tell Bradley about offers, he chose not to inform his client, and his retainer agreement did inform Bradley that the Copyright Act includes a provision in which attorney's fees may be awarded to prevailing plaintiffs, but not that the fee-shifting provision equally supports awards to prevailing defendants. Lulled into a false sense of security, Bradley testified that he chose to work with the firm because of its contingency fee arrangement. That meant that he didn't have to worry about it. I don't have to put money up front. Out of self-interest, Leibowitz sought to protect Bradley's interest, but to extract a quick settlement regardless of the merits of the claims. Of course, it is an unpardonable sin for a lawyer to fail to advise a client of a settlement offer, and to make it worse, it seems likely that Leibowitz deliberately did that because he wanted a bigger fee than the Rule 68 offer would have allowed. Leibowitz therefore violated his ethical obligations as a member of the bar. Neither of Bradley's claims was viable. It was frivolous to deny that Bradley had posted the photograph using Facebook's public setting and to deny that Facebook Terms of Service provided that when you publish content using the public setting, it means that you're allowing everyone to access and use that information. Even after Analytical produced those terms, Leibowitz falsely asserted that they were not in Bradley's possession. In his deposition, Bradley agreed that his conduct on Facebook was governed by the terms of service. It was sheer bad faith to maintain that more recent terms of service governed. 
Leibowitz knew well that he had no basis to represent that the Facebook terms of service in mid-2019 governed the party's conduct in 2017. He had read those terms of service just a few weeks before in a Protecting Your Copyrights conference for photographers. Leibowitz also raised a specious argument that Bradley had a right to reach a jury on the issue of damages, insisting that harm is not a prerequisite to sustaining a copyright infringement claim, but that is only true if the plaintiff is eligible for statutory damages. Bradley was not, or if the defendant has recoverable profits, unlike analytical. Because actual damages are purely compensatory, a copyright plaintiff who can recover only actual damages must demonstrate some such harm. Leibowitz was well aware of this basic legal precept. His law firm website informs prospective clients, you may receive actual damages and profits. However, calculating these requires evidence of licensing history, market value, earnings received. So it was frivolous to demand that a jury weigh damages that no evidence supported. It was also an act of bad faith to contend that analytical removed copyright management or attribution information after analytical showed that the picture was received with no such information CMI attached. Leibowitz often pursues infringement claims against valid license holders as he did here, and they give some examples. Leibowitz did not make a sufficient investigation. There was no pre-suit communication with Analytical. He ignored repeated warnings that the claims were unfounded. This was one of 750 copyright cases he alone or personally or through his firm filed in 2019. More than 2,500 cases in four and a half years. In May 2020, he had more than 500 pending. He should not be filing hundreds of lawsuits in different courts around the country because he cannot competently prosecute the number of cases he is filing. That made him a clear and present danger to the fair and efficient administration of justice. His litigation strategy fits squarely within the definition of a copyright troll. He wrote out this lawsuit, gambling as usual that a merits dismissal would bring at worst a Section 505 award that Bradley alone would face after failing to warn him of the likely consequence. You're a fiduciary as a lawyer. You're supposed to advise your client in the client's best interests. So telling the client, hey, if we lose this thing, you're going to have to pay a bunch of money. That's required. His tactics require sanctions to compensate analytical in full. Let's see how much money they ask for then. Analytical should be awarded every bit of its excess costs, expenses, and attorney's fees. GoFundMe donors substantially contributed to funding the defense. Analytical plans to reimburse the donors if its request is awarded, even though their donations were not contingent. The donations should not limit the recovery in any way. Analytical has $6,689.32 in costs and $177,801.10 in attorney's fees, which they've attached declarations regarding and we're not going to go over. 668932 plus 1778010 is $184,490.42. So $185,000 in legal costs and expenses. And that's just the stuff that can be recovered. There are some things that cannot be recovered according to the Supreme Court. Now that's under the Copyright Act, so maybe 1927 allows other costs. But yeah, $185,000 in costs to be visited against Leibowitz himself, that would be a good thing to see. He needs to suffer those kinds of consequences for this kind of behavior. We have a whole playlist of other Leibowitz shenaniganry. If you want to view that on our channel, I will post a link here. Otherwise, let me know what you think of that in the comments below. That's a pretty good explanation or pretty good motion, and I expect it'll be granted in full. But we'll see what happens, and I'll update you when we have an order from the court or maybe an interesting response from Leibowitz or Mr. Bradley. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And that's today's video. Special thanks to our top supporters in July, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Spirit Bear, Benjamin Hightoff, Ugly Grill, Rudolph Besherer Jr., Torpedon, Brandon Abel, Shadow Tycho, RDH Dragon, Earthbound Star, and Pure Magma. You can support Lawful Masses on patreon.com slash ljfrench, sponsus.com slash law, through YouTube memberships, and through Floatplane subscriptions. 
Join me for our weekly live production stream on twitch.tv slash lawful masses on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. I hope everyone has a great week. I love you all. Bye. I can agree that a Vuvuzela is a crime against humanity. I do agree on that one.